You know, I think to myself, um, as a pastor um, that's privileged enough to lead and, and pastor a church like we have, um, and, and, and truly, you know, looking at and examining my own walk and my own life and my inability to digest spiritual food. See, I mean, the bottom line is this, that, um, you know, all of us, um, you know, I, I can teach on sacrifice, I can teach on obedience, I, I can teach on purpose, I can teach on calling, I can teach on the year of never befores, I can, I can talk about last week, um, what could you have had, what it says, the things that God says in his word that you can have as a believer, but you haven't seen them yet, but it really comes down to your ability or your inability to digest spiritual food. The Bible says in the New Testament that there are two different levels of faith. Um, I, I said this last week. Um, in, in regards to faith, there are two different types. James says that there is working faith and there is dead faith. Jesus says there is little faith and there is great faith. The Greek says that there is persuasion or the lack thereof. But the Bible also says that there are two different levels of faith, a milk level and a meat level. And I think it's so important to recognize and examine what level you are particular on and, and, and your ability to digest the Word of God. Tonight we're talking specifically about the Word of God, specifically about what it is that you're able to digest. Or are you just here to hear the Word? Are you just here to listen to the Word? And if you don't take the Word with you, if you do not chew on the Word, if you do not digest the Word, you're not going to be able to apply the Word. Because if you're just coming here week after week, hearing information that never leads to revelation, which will turn out to be transformation in your life, what is it we're really doing? So it's important to really um, become aware of what you're able to digest. And when you become aware of what that is you're able to digest, that is your starting point. That is your starting point. So Holy Spirit, I ask that you honor people's attendance. Lord, I ask that you honor um, my study time. I ask that you do whatever it is that needs to be done tonight that will open ears and eyes on what it is and where they're at and where they need to go and what, what you have made available to them, Lord. I ask that you think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. Holy Spirit, I ask that you change the dimensions of this place in a way that people will leave here differently than they came. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Because it's so important. I mean, it's been a crazy week. I mean, um, we honored Karen Christopherson. I was at uh, federal prison yesterday morning after marriage builders. I, I left and um, Tom and I went up to Duluth, got up there at one in the morning, got up early to go see Keith in prison. And I had asked Keith as I was leaving prison, because after prison we had to run to feed my starving children. And those aren't things I have to do. Those are things I get to do. But I asked Keith as I was leaving the prison last yesterday, I said to him, I said, what is it that you, we can do for you? And they're so humble they won't ask for help. I said, well, what is it that your wife would want for Mother's Day? And she goes, well, she loves those yellow roses. I don't know about you, but yellow roses are hard to find on a Saturday afternoon before Mother's Day. <laughs> but we hunted for those yellow roses, and we found those yellow roses. And after we did our things for the mothers this morning, which was well over 100 um, this morning, um, we brought her back up here no different than I brought my mom up here, and we presented those yellow roses to her, and you could have heard a pin drop in this place. Are you able to digest spiritual food? Are you able to digest the Word of God? Uh, 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 where are you at in your journey? And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10, how is your digestive system working? Can you even chew on this stuff? We, 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 we go above and beyond, and, and, and I say this all is to encourage you to pr print Word Ups. So whoever's got a Word Up, hold it up. I strongly suggest you grab a word up before you walk in the sanctuary. And, and, and that allows you to take what is being taught with you. But the Bible says they all ate. Say all. all. Say all. all. The same spiritual food. Every week, each and every one of you hears the same message. It's the same message. And it comes down to what are you able to digest? What are you able to digest within the message? It says, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them, and that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. See, that tells me that, that you better pay, I better pay attention to the fact that even though I can go to church, 
and listen to the word and the majority of people that go to church that's all they ever do is listen to the word they don't study the word they don't chew on the word they don't memorize scriptures and they're not digesting the word and if you're not digesting something you're not going to grow if you're just listening it's not going to do it when it comes to maturing and growth and, and check out what it says. so it's nevertheless god was not pleased with most of them Men, their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. See, the devil wants to divide and conquer. The, the devil wants you to, he wants to separate. He's okay with you going, coming here. The devil is perfectly fine with you coming to church. It's when you begin to digest and apply this stuff in your life is when he starts taking notice of you. See, you, you, if, 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 there's babies that are in the nursery of this church right now. And if they don't digest food, they're not going to grow. They're not going to grow. And if you do not digest spiritual food, you're not going to grow. And check out what the Bible says now in Hebrews. There are two levels of spiritual food. We have much to say about this. Anytime the Bible says we have much to say about this, that means that it's hard to get it through to you. It isn't the first time we said this. So when the Bible says that we have much to say about this, but it's hard to make clear to you because you no longer try to understand. See, we just come to listen, we just come to hear, but, but we don't ask God for understanding of what is being taught so we can digest it and apply it to our lives. And the Word isn't just for you. The Word is for, for people that God can touch in and through you. Now it says, by, in fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers. It's been very discouraging me for 13 years in the recovery ministry, for the thousands of people that have come through our doors, not many of them are teaching right now. I don't have a big pool to pick from when I need to grab leaders in the hundred beds we have. No disrespect to anybody here. It's because you're not digesting what is being taught. It's because maybe you don't know how. I mean, I remember when I, I don't know, maybe I don't remember it, but I had my own kids. I had to tell them how to, you know, swallow, chew. No different than spiritual food. I think we can't bring ourselves to that level of humility. It says you need somebody to teach you the elementary, the basic truths of God's word all over you. But thank God you're still able to be taught. It really comes down to, are you able to be taught? You need milk. Say milk. milk. Say milk. milk. Not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, still being an infant, is not acquainted. See, I had to get to know the Word, and then the Word, which already knew me, which is living and active, I knew the Word, and I knew the Word knew me, because the Word is God. See, I had to become acquainted with spiritual food in a way, and, and, and it's so important. And then it goes on to say this, for people that have meat, it's through constant use. See, there, there's a big difference here. Um, um, when, when I look at a little child, um, and, and, and I look at this, this champion here, who's a total champion. Now, this is his bottle. Now, look at him, look at this bottle. This bottle is very intriguing. He's about ready to reach for the bottle. Now, he can't live on meat yet. He's not able to live on meat. I studied this. I'm not a mother. But typically, the first six months of childhood, you can only digest milk, correct? <laughs> From six to eight months, they can begin to digest little baby food. From eight to ten months, mom's or ten tendency is to chop up food. But the Bible says, but solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Now, this little champ isn't in a mature enough position to train himself. He needs a trainer. He'll tell you when he's hungry, but he doesn't know where the milk comes from. Too many of us are asking questions. Now I'm going to take it a step further. I've been doing this for 13 years, far from perfect. And I always ask myself the question as I sit in front of people on an individual level, even as, as I teach you every night, it says 1 Corinthians 3, how are you able to be taught? 
The Bible says that, however, brothers and sisters, I could not talk to you as spiritual people. Now, do you think I can talk to this guy as a spiritual person? <laughs> but there are grown adults looking at me the same way he just looked at me. Because they can't get beyond the bottle. See, the Bible says that I cannot talk to you as spiritual people. So what has to happen when I meet with people and I teach? The problem is a good coach of any athletic team isn't going to tiptoe through the tulips and walk on eggshells coaching a championship team. The coach is going to tell you exactly what you need to do and when to do it. And if you pout, then you're off the team. But when I'm teaching people on an individual, I got to take their spiritual temperature first to make sure they're not going to get offended by what I'm going to say. And I can't even talk to them in a spiritual manner. I can't just go straight truth with them. I got to make sure and I got to see where they are in their spiritual development. Now check this out. It goes on to say, but only as worldly people, dominated by human, and na human nature, mere infants in the new life of Christ. See, if you're a new creation in Christ, you should also have a new life. You really can't be a new creation without a new life. It goes on, and check out what it says. I fed you milk. I fed you milk. Check this out. Not solid food, for you were not yet able to receive it. Some of us are in the not yet stage, and that's not a bad thing, as long as you know that you're in the not yet stage. If I was to put a top sirloin steak in front of this champion, he wouldn't know what to do with it, but he grabbed his bottle. Some of us are grabbing for the steak when we need to be on the bottle. Check this out. It says, you are still, you're still not ready. See, a lot of us are in, we can't receive this spiritual nourishment because we're, we're not able to and we're still not ready. And it says, you are still worldly, controlled by ordinary impulses and sinful capacity. As long as there is jealousy, strife, discord among you you are not you are are you not unspiritual see i need to start leading this church without worrying if i'm going to offend you i'm telling you i got seasoned professionals that i can't even have adult spiritual talk with under the sound of my voice if we're going to do what god has called us to do we need to begin to digest spiritual meat now here's the problem i run into when i get grown adults coming into my office for counseling <laughs> this is a big problem See, now, even he is looking at him like, why do you have my bottle? Why do you have my bottle? See, he is perplexed. <laughs> and that's typically what happens is they fall, even though that wasn't planned. <laughs> Let's give him a hand. You looked at him and he saw the difference. See, too many of us are grown men and women and we're still on spiritual milk. Let's give this champion a hand. See, the key is hopefully Mike and Tom are okay. But what happens typically is we're still on the bottle and, and there's four steps on how to mature. It says the steps to spiritual maturity, a desire to grow and maintain that desire. See, a lot of us have the desire but we don't maintain the desire. It says, worldly, you want to grow up to be like somebody. Who did you want to be like when you grew up? See, as I began to digest spiritual meat, who I wanted to be like changed. I wanted to be like Jesus. I didn't want to be like a professional athlete. I didn't want to be like all these things are money, property, and prestige. I wanted to be like Jesus. Children get excited to learn something new, a first step, a word, to draw a picture want to develop new abilities. The spiritual sense of a desire to grow is some people like being spiritual babies. They like being spiritual babies because when you're a spiritual baby, you take no responsibility. You kind of can still do whatever it is you want to do because you're expecting people to do it for you. We are born again so we can become mature Christians actively serving the Lord. When you have a desire to grow, you want to actively serve the Lord. Some start out on fire for God and lose their momentum. That's what happens to a lot of people, a high percentage of people. They start on fire for God and lose their momentum. They de the, the, the development of spiritual indifference. Well, this isn't for me. That isn't for me. I only, you know, if you don't believe all of this, you don't believe it. 
See, Leanne and I were talking about 11 o'clock. She was over at my house taking care of Grandma. And what I seen in, as we wrote that $25,000 check, it was a, totally exciting when you did it for the first time. But what, what happens when it becomes a routine in your life? A lot of people fade away. A lot of people are addicted to the feeling of faith. Not the principle. See, if we have a desire to grow, it says become a stagnant and don't think additional growth is needed. We say, I'm good. I'm good enough. Going to church is enough for me. People don't see the need for growing. Psalm 20 says step one is to ask God to give you the desire to grow. See, I had to ask God to give me the desires to grow. God says that he will give us the desires of our heart. See, when I ask God to give me the desire to grow closer to him, my desires changed. My worldly desires change. It says, make all your plans succeed. When, when your desires align with his plan, that's when fulfillment and maturity happens. The second step would be we need nourishment. You can't grow without nourishment. It says, we all need food to live. See, just like your body needs food to live, your spirit needs food to live. Our nutrition will affect how we feel and how long we will live. Spiritual nutrition is nourishment comes from the Bible, church, support meetings, prayer. So what are you doing throughout the week to get your spiritual nutrition? How can you expect to grow from a milk stage to a meat stage without spiritual nutrition? And it's so important to, to realize, and that was probably the biggest fiasco I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Mike's back, let's give him a hand. <laughs> But tonight I want you to examine what are you watching on TV? What's got your ear? What's got your eyes? It, it goes on to say, too, your hobbies. Um, are you studying? Are you at church more than one day a week? Are you in prayer? What are you feeding your mind with? God's word or earthly pleasures? You're not going to be able to grow spiritually into different levels if you're not getting spiritual nutrition. And coming to church to hear the message that you're not even really able to, and I don't say this to put anybody down, but are you even really digesting and chewing on the Word of God? Because the Bible says in First Peter now, step two is change your diet to adjust your appetite. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk. I crave the Word of God. I crave support meetings. I crave um, um, doing... I, I've been at church so many times this week, probably 13, 14 times. See, when you begin to adjust your diet, you will crave different things. I don't crave my favorite TV show anymore. See, when I, when I adjusted my diet with my personal trainer at Lifetime Fitness and I started drinking 100 ounces of water a day and had fruits and vegetables, I began to crave different things. But that was on me. Those carrots were not appealing at first. The Bible isn't going to be appealing at first. Prayer is going to be difficult at first. But without that type of nutrition, you ain't going to grow. Check out what it says now. Exercise and practice. See, you, you develop a, 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 an acquired taste for spiritual food. It goes on to say exercise and practice. Worldly. Developing skills required continual repetition. Children learning to walk, try and try again. See, can you imagine if your life consisted of your spiritual journey? If you were a child and, and, and you, all you knew how to do was crawl, and every time you got up to walk, you fell down, but here you are at 40 years old still crawling because you never learned to walk. Some of you are still crawling in your spiritual life because you're not trying again just because you fell down once, twice, or ten times. We have to learn how to exercise and, 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 and practice. It says developing skills requires continual repetition. It says now in the spiritual, to understand the Bible and the sermon, we must study it again and again. When you come to church, you're hearing me teach the message. The message goes into your knower. Your knower tells you to look at the scripture. That's the third deposit. And then something that the spirit tells you to write down about what the pastor just said. Now that's the fourth deposit. Now your digestive system is working. You're chewing on this stuff that comes directly from God. It's the word of God and it's alive and well. But if you ain't digesting this, it ain't working. You take it home. You look at it again. 
and you exercise and you practice and it doesn't all have to make sense. Have you been to a Wednesday night Bible study? I can't even pronounce half the words. But I'm not afraid to get up here and try. I wasn't afraid four years ago to stand in front of hundreds of people when it was without a clue what to do, but I knew God called me to it and I knew he'd see me through it. See, you know, and, and, and as a child, do you, do you think a child that is crawling, um, more or less, um, it, it looks at somebody that's walking, they're like, how do they do that? Show me how to do it. Allow people to show you. It takes exercise and practice. It says in 2 Timothy, step three, train yourself to be disciplined. It says all scripture is God breathed, is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training. And right. See, too many of us never get beyond teaching. That's the problem with church. That's the problem with, 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 with pastoring versus leading. Pastors will only teach, they won't rebuke. They won't correct or train. You will never grow without being corrected. You will never grow without being trained. Too many pastors are afraid that their congregation is gonna leave, so they keep them on milk just to keep them in the seats. I'll say that again. Too many pastors, and I'm not taking anybody's inventory or credit. I'm just telling you. They're afraid to digest the steak and say, it ain't okay that you're just sitting in your chair doing nothing. There's something wrong with that. But they keep them dependent on the bottle. And they know they can only grow so much. And as long as they sit in that pew and give a little bit of money, that's not how this works. See, where we're going... I don't care if there's 50 people in this church. As long as the 50 people are warriors. It isn't about the numbers for me. It isn't about the numbers. It's about the impact. And let me tell you, with 50 people, you can do more than you can with 2,000 complacent people. I'm not here to keep you on the bottle just so you can keep coming. I'm about ready in the next couple months to serve, serve up a steak that you are going to be able to chew, you are going to be able to digest. Here's the thing. There's three signs um, if a person is ready, a child ready, to digest meat, solid food. The first sign is, and I looked at this on the internet, somebody gave me this information, is they're, they're able to sit up on their own with support. That's the first sign. And I'm going to ask you, as I said earlier, for the first six months typically of a child's life, they want milk and milk only. That's the only thing they're capable of. But how long has it been since you've been coming to church and you're still drinking milk? The first sign is that they're able to stand up on their own with support. See, they, they, they know that they're going to need support. The second sign is they hold their head in the right position. When a child is ready to go to the meat level in their development, they're able to hold their head in the right position. From a spiritual standpoint, you need to know order and authority. You need to be corrected and rebuked because that's love. I mean, if the coach of who have the Penguins, I don't even know if they're still playing, I caught about two minutes of the game, if he just says, will you guys just go out there and do the best you can and however it goes, so be it, I love you. They wouldn't be in the playoffs. If you go to work tomorrow and the CEO of that company says, do whatever you want, as long as you come to work, we're good with it. That company ain't going to last. Why in church are we keeping people dependent on the bottle to keep them in the pews? Wouldn't this be a little more important than a hockey game or a job when we're talking about souls on the line? Say exercise. exercise. Say practice. practice. I haven't been in the gym for two weeks. I'm not eating carrots and broccoli anymore. I'm eating score bars and sweet tarts. <laughs> no different than you stopping exercising spiritually. Pretty soon you're not doing anything with God, but you begin to replace the things you were doing or should be doing with God with not so good things. No different in the spiritual. Give God a hand. So we can't just be taught, we need to be rebuked, corrected, and trained. It says the fourth step is time and patience. 
Patience, worldly. Sometimes children become impatient. They can't wait until they can drive or turn 18. I'll never re- forget Nikki. I can't, I'm out of the house, 18. She was out of the house soon thereafter. I've never seen her at the house more than she is today. <laughs> she came to the realization the world isn't what she thought it was. And family and God is everything. See, it's so important. It says parents are continually correcting, instructing. and di- See, the problem is, guys, we either had parents, some of us, that overly corrected us or didn't correct us at all. So when it comes to spiritual discipline, we don't know what to do. It was a free-for-all. And just because God loves us unconditionally, we think our Christian walk is a free-for-all. If it doesn't cost you something, it doesn't have value. And that's why people want to keep you on the the bottle so they'll keep you in the pews. If you're the only place you are in your Christian walk is in the pews, you're not in the right place. This is just a building. You are the church. We've got to be in that. That's where we're going. And again, if we have 50 people, if we have 20 people, it doesn't matter to me. Spiritually, we aren't going to know everything with God right away. We must take the time to develop. You won't be like mature members right away. We need to keep growing in spite of our mistakes. Someday we will look back at our childish mistakes and laugh. See, I giggle at the stuff I used to do. But when I was doing it, I wasn't giggling. When I was doing it, I thought it was right. Great servants aren't people who haven't sinned, but people who learn from their mistakes and go on to serve the Lord faithfully. When I'm counseling people, I tell them, I can only do so much for you with the experience of the Word of God and my own mentor. But if you have the humility to ask questions and be trained and corrected and rebuked and taught, God, through the Spirit, will do it for you. It's that level of humility. And it says in Galatians 9, do not become weary in doing good, for at a proper time you'll reap a harvest. The timing isn't about you. God is never early. God is never late. God is always on time. Especially those who belong to the families of believers. See, we, we, we got too many people hurting people in church. I mean, God Almighty, we're nice to some guy on the street and we're, we're, we're tolerant with them, but when it comes to church folk or even your own family, we're always the worst to the people closest to us. And people are dependent on the bottle and they're afraid to go. So, so where are you at today? Where are you at today? As I look at spiritual development, it says in Galatians 4, you won't get what you, God has for you until you mature. I said it last week that God has got keys for you, but he's not like our parents. It doesn't matter when you turn 16. You're not getting your license. You're not going to get what God has for you until you mature. Because God's never going to give you something that will harm you. Now, you can go steal the keys. You can go get ahead of God. You can go do your own things. But check this out. It says, what I am saying is that as long as the heir is a child, do you understand if you believe in Jesus Christ... If Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, you are an heir, and an heir is entitled to succeed, entitled to inherit property. You're an heir of the King of Kings. And you got to go beyond the milk. you got to learn how to chew on spiritual meat and begin to learn how to digest and swallow spiritual... Now, check this out. If you're a child, you're no different than a slave, it says. Although he owns the whole estate. Wouldn't that be something if you lived your whole life owning the whole estate that Jesus has for you? And you never were able to tap into it. The whole estate is yours. He is a subject to guardians and trustees until the time has come set by his father. So also, when we were children... We were in slavery under the basic principles of the world. What happens is when you're dependent on milk, the world controls you. The Bible says that you may have to live in the world, but you're not of the world. This is not your home. And he paid the price so you can get the whole estate. But if you live your whole Christian life on milk, you're never going to be able to digest where we're going. And don't say that now and leave the church because... Well, then do whatever you want to do. We're going to be serving up meat. And it may be confusing. You may not know how to chew like you're supposed to chew. You may not even know where to swallow. But if you're like that guy in his 60s in that video, 
warming up milk at that stage of his life. You're going to miss the whole estate. Say whole estate. whole estate. The Bible says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. And I thought like a child. When I became a man, it's not gender specific. I put away childish things. Eventually, I'm going to have to put the bottle away. But what and how are you speak, speaking, reasoning and understanding? How are you thinking? What do you need to put away that is keeping you dependent on the bottle? See, Kasana is eventually going to have to hide the bottle from those twins. Because when she cuts them off from the bottle, they're going to come looking for it. And I might be talking about another bottle for some of you. But when God cuts it, and he says, it's time for you to start to chew on solid food. Don't spend too much time going to look for the bottle. What do you need to put away? What do you need to do to go to the next level of faith to begin to chew on spiritual meat? Next week, that's what I'm going to be talking about. You have a sheet of paper in your programs. See... This scripture says speaking, understanding, and thinking. Your systems are under test. Your digestive systems are under test. And it all depends on your speaking, your understanding, and your thinking. What about your speaking, your understanding, and your thinking needs to change to now mature to the level that God has called you to? What do you need to leave behind tonight? What do you leave? It's not about not taking responsibility. God will thoroughly equip you for every good work. If I can do it, you can do it. Because he doesn't say Jeff Hill can do all things through Christ who gives us right. He says all of us can do it. As the cross comes out here right now, I'm asking you once and for all to put certain things behind you that you can be freer and lighter in a way to begin to digest solid spiritual food. Please come forward and put it in the cross. Ephesians 4, the time has come to mature. It says, then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves, blown here and there. What's got your ear? What is influencing you other than the Word of God? 
It says, instead, speaking the truth in love. One of the hardest things it is to be me growing up as a people pleaser. My identity was wrapped up on what you thought of me. What would you do if I came to you and corrected you? Said that this is not okay. The way you're thinking, the way you're acting, the way you're performing, your sacrifice is not adequate. What would you do? Would you quit? Would you leave the church? Would you go to another church where they would give you another bottle? Walking into that church looking for one of these. I don't really want to know a pastor. What would you do if somebody in authority spoke the truth and love to you? Would you leave? What if you walk into your company tomorrow and they say, hey, first quarter results are in. You did poorly. You better step up your game, otherwise you're going to get fired. Would you leave? What if your pastor came to you and you have a position in this church and say, you've been complacent. You're late. You're not showing up on time. You're not going to all the events. You're not setting in a good example. Would you quit? Would you be blown from here or there with another minute, hour, day, month, and year going by without getting the whole estate? The whole estate is at hand. And God ain't going to give it to you until you get off this. What would you do if you got corrected or rebuked? See, too many of us take correction as rejection. Some of us have been doing this a long time. If you don't believe that God loves you or I love you or anybody of spiritual influence in your life loves you and you're just waiting for somebody to coddle you, you're going to be on the milk. What needs to be confronted in you? If you always comfort what needs to be confronted, all you'll ever do is comfort. And then you'll be a little... A, ma uh, a man like me that was 35 to 38 with little boy issues because no one wanted to confront me because I would leave you I was scared this church my church your church is about ready to go to a different place and that place we need men and women we need people that can digest spiritual solid food we need more teachers to teach the hundreds if not thousands that are yet to come I can't do it all anymore it's your season it's your time if I grabbed that champ if he was still in here I would tell him see the third thing when you know a child is ready to digest solid food is when they become interested in what you're eating. Are you interested in what the people of spiritual maturity are eating? There'll come a day that Shar, who wasn't in here, will be interested in what Kasana's eating what Mitch is eating there'll come a day that they'll ask and grab for that food your day is here it's in your sight you're ready what would you do can we start to talk like adults because you know what the reason the spirit did what the spirit did with Mike and Tom falling like they did because you're always going to fall if you're a grown adult, drinking milk. I can't carry you. You need to be carrying people. God has handpicked you. And he will give you everything you need for this next season of your life. But the first thing that needs to happen 
is you need to know and you need to tell your Lord and Savior how great he is. See, you will never follow something that you don't believe is great. You will never follow something that you do not believe that can help you. You will never invest in something that you truly doesn't have value to you. I'm here to tell you, church, this is your season. This is your time. The whole estate is at hand. And if you get the whole estate in your lifetime, that's what you give to your family. That's what you give to your great-grandchildren. That's what you give to your spiritual children. I got spiritual children in this church. They're just as important as my natural children. I love each and every one of you. I don't come to offend. I come to address. May God be with you. Please come to the altar. A praise I got. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, we'll see how great, how great is our God. The splendor of a king, cold and majesty. Let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. Darkness tries to hide and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. How great is our God.
come before you today and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the word that you have given Pastor Jeff to share today. And today we just take a step back and we think and we, we just step back to see where we are. And we pray that you would begin to stretch us and grow us so that we could put down the bottle and be able to take this meat, Lord. We pray that you would be with us each and every step of the way, God, because it's going to get uncomfortable. But we know that you are true and that we know that you are faithful, God, to all who believe. So we just pray that you would keep each and every one of us safe, Lord. We pray for safe travels. We pray that we would take this word and go out of the church, Lord, and that we would enjoy, enjoy this week, Lord, and that you would bring us back safely next week. In your name we pray, amen.